All right. Um, good evening, everybody. It is 6 p.m. on uh, Monday evening, October 18th. Welcome to our pre-town meeting meeting that we've scheduled to give our town meeting members the opportunity to ask any questions about our warrant articles and specifically to provide some more detailed information on three of the zoning warrant articles that will be voted on uh, next week at the town meeting, which is scheduled for 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 26th. So right now we're here uh, with our department heads and those who are sponsoring warrant articles. Again, to answer any questions that town meeting members may have, we are having this taped and live streamed, so those of you who can't be here are welcome to watch it uh, through Auburn Community Television and I believe Facebook streaming as well. So if, given that there is nobody here uh, from town meeting members to ask questions, seeing that as this is being taped, we want town meeting members to have the opportunity to learn more about the zoning warrant articles prior to next week's meeting. So I'm just gonna therefore turn it over to Adam Menard, our town planner, uh, to talk about a couple of the proposals. And then I believe Amy Contois, our animal control officer, to talk about uh, her zoning article. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Adam. Thank you. Well, thank you, Julie. Thanks to everybody for participating and um, being here to answer questions in case they come up. Uh, my name's Adam Menard, I'm the town planner. There are three zoning uh, bylaw proposals in the fall town meeting warrant this year. Um, so we want to provide you as much information so you can vote on them um, in a knowledgeable manner uh, next week. So first I want to start off by reading a couple of things. Um, zoning is foundational to community development because it dictates land usage, which is very important for the future of the town to know how the land is going to be used. Um, it's obvious that provision must be made for changing the regulations as conditions change or new conditions arise. Otherwise, zoning would be a straitjack and a detriment to a community instead of an asset. And that is in quotes because it was written by the Department of Commerce uh, in 1926. Um, it was written shortly after the Second Industrial Revolution, uh, a time of great change. Uh, I think it's pertinent today as we are entering the Fourth Industrial Revolution with AI, biotech, and all those changes we're seeing today. Just want you to keep that in mind that change must happen to adapt to the times. Um, so next, I'm gonna turn it over to our animal control officer, Amy Contoy, so she can talk a little bit about um, pro zoning, but animal zoning bylaw and why we think it should be added. Thank you, Adam. Um, so for this year's uh, fall town meeting, we are proposing some changes to the um, zoning bylaws regarding animals. Currently, zoning bylaw 3.9.1.4 is the only bylaw that addresses the number of animals per, prop per property, and that was last updated in 1998. This bylaw does not differentiate between household pets and livestock. Um, it only allows for four adult animals per property and does not define what an animal is. Um, so that doesn't differentiate between your pets and your household and um, livestock, poultry, or anything that might live outdoors. The current zoning bylaws do not reflect uh, recent cultural changes and movements towards sustainable backyard farming. Um, over the years, we have seen an increase in um, residents in our own town and surrounding communities that are interested in raising their own poultry for their eggs um, and other animals that um, they can have sustainable farming with. Um, because the existing zoning bylaws don't further define what an animal is, when the zoning bylaw says you can have four adult animals, that is technically counting your pets inside your house and um, anything outdoors. So if you own two dogs and two cats, you wouldn't be allowed to have any chickens. Proposed changes define and identify the difference between household pets and livestock and poultry, and then it further regulates them separately. The proposed changes fill in the gaps in the unregulated keeping of animals and poultry livestock in town and actually make the keeping and raising of poultry and livestock more allowable um, for our residents dependent on their property size and setbacks. Um, the only other section um, in the zoning bylaws that directly addresses livestock and poultry uh, is in the table of principal uses under 3.2.1.3 
for commercial poultry or livestock, farm, raising of pets for gainful purposes, and this is only allowed on a property greater than five acres. So the changes that we're proposing would make it a little bit more allowable for residents on smaller properties um, with the understanding that we're still a pretty residential community and we do have to be respectful to neighbors, but still making it allowable um, in a legal way for the residents. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amy. Uh, Amy can be reached for questions if you have any at the Department of Inspectional Services. She can be emailed or called directly. I'm just happy to answer any questions you may have um, over the next week. So I'm going to go into a little bit about economic development. There are several drivers of economic growth. Um, creating an entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, creating an environment where people want to do business and identify, identify and support entrepreneurs. Uh, human investment drives new economic growth. Uh, successful communities recognize their vitality, dependent on new innovation, enhance educational opportunities, and strong human capital. I think Auburn is pretty strong with a strong social capital, includes successful small communities have cultivated strong social fabric and relationships that go deep and are durable over the long term. And research has found that successful communities identify and engage residents to help craft and implement long-term visions. The town has been very good at doing this over the past few years with various planning initiatives and um, events like tonight's event. A strong quality of place, successful communities create vibrant downtown environmentally environments where people want to be. This is very much happening in the Drury Square District as we speak. Um, dedication to progress, successful, thriving, and cool communities are proactive and determined to push the community forward no matter how small the steps. And that's a little bit what we want to focus on today, being proactive um, in creating thriving communities. So some of the economic environments that's been occurring over the past few years, past decade, really since the um, rise of the Internet of Things include a shrinking retail, high tech, 5G and AI are gonna dramatically reshape how we live and do business over the next decade and beyond. And um, in Massachusetts, the life sciences has been a huge industry. Um, Auburn wants to capitalize on, on these things. We don't want to be left behind. Uh, we do need to compete with surrounding communities and make sure we have a strong commercial base that we all value. Uh, some of the distinctive resources Auburn possesses are the interstates and the arterial roads through 12 and 20. Um, you have great access to Worcester, you can get to Worcester within minutes, whether on the highways or South Bridge Street. And we do have a strong industrial base. Auburn's very fortunate, not many communities can brag about the industrial base. We want to maintain that base and encourage um, new businesses. These are some of the planning efforts that have been done over the past few years. Um, there's a zoning diagnostic done by CMRPC. Uh, we've received a grant for that study. Uh, there was a master plan in 2019. It's a master plan survey which received great responses. We had almost 600 responses to where we got a lot of the ideas um, and that these zoning proposals come out of. Uh, the Drury Square Vision Plan, um, which you can again see actively under, underway with the infrastructure changes at Drury Square. The Economic Development Strategic Plan, there were several uh, suggestions that we uh, picked up in that plan that were also in the master plan that directly influenced these proposed changes. It's the Housing Plan and the Auburn Vision Plan of 2020. So a lot of planning has been done over the past few years. It's also been a great deal of public outreach, um, meetings like this today. Um, the master plan committee met regularly for about five years, um, as well as the already mentioned survey, which had great response. Zoning bylaw review committee meets on a regular basis. Um, planning board meets regularly, economic development committee, as well as the plan. And again, the housing plan and the, there's a currently ongoing, soon to be complete open space and recreation plan. 
So all these planning initiatives and all these committees, they met regularly, they saw public outreach. Again, this is why some of these zoning proposals are in front of you. Tonight in a town meeting next week, these are the suggestions from the community that want to see some of these changes. So first off, I'm gonna talk about the table of uses and descriptions of why there should be a change. It was first adopted in 1941, 80 years ago, um, and the bylaw has been updated, but it's only sporadically and uh, piecemeal, only usually reacting to certain situations. Some of the proposed changes are the new modern uses of um, biotech, high-tech, um, breweries is a, a popular one that we heard from. We wanna attract some microbrewery to Auburn. Um, and it eliminates a lot of uses that really aren't existing business types. Um, a computer service bureau, telephone answering services, and secretarial services. These really don't exist anymore. So we wanna remove those from the table of uses and add the new uses. Um, it combines several uses to be less redundant and creates a table of uses and the paired the descriptions that is clear and comprehensible. So we have a, have a choice. We can let the current patterns continue or protect some of the community, community characteristics we value. And we're trying to protect those characteristics that we value as well as be proactive to attract the modern 21st century business. We wanna protect the neighborhoods at, and develop the commercial sectors. Uh, so one out, of, one out of every four households is composed of a single person. Uh, three out of four don't have school-aged children living at home. I mention this because the households today are not the same as they were 50 years ago. People have fewer kids. Um, they, they live in different ways. They live in apartments more so than they did. Um, people just aren't having kids. They don't necessarily want large yards, especially um, the younger generations don't want to spend the time maintaining a large household as they did in generations past. So there is a definite generational shift that we've seen over the years. And this is why we want to make some of the changes to the housing aspect of the table of uses. Um, and where, where some of these changes uh, will reflect the community changes over the years. Um, there's been shifts in where businesses are located. We're trying to make sure that the zoning reflects that. Um, and again, adds many new uses. So like I already mentioned, breweries, solar, um, different types of manufacturing, biotech, shared spaces, aquaculture, um, which is um, kind of a popular new, new way of growing your vegetables um, and other you know, seafood um, mussels and, and the like. People can grow those not in the ocean, they grow them in factories. Um, and tech incubators, we wanna attract high tech business. They're good paying jobs, they're clean jobs, and they, they'll promote the, promote the town by having these businesses. Um, so that is the table of uses. Uh, and if you have questions on this particular uh, proposal, please reach out to me. Um, anybody at Inspectional Services can either contact you, direct you to me, or can get somebody who can answer your questions. Uh, and the third zoning proposal is to the dimensional regulations. Um, in Auburn is a small town. Um, a, lot of it's, a lot of it's been built out. The commercial districts specifically and the industrial sectors, there's not much more room to, to build um, horizontally. So the only way a lot of businesses can go is building vertically. And a lot of these companies um, want a vertical space. A lot of the pharma, pharmaceutical, biotech, high tech, they don't want to be in a one story building. They want to be um, you know, multiple stories. They want the, the density so they can have all of their um, you know, offices and, and you know, infrastructure in one small space. Uh, land is at a premium. If you've watched the real estate market, it's a little crazy. Um, so this, um, those open spaces may not always be affordable to um, someone that's looking to build. So we want to, a lot of um, developers need the density to be profitable. Um, Revenue is important. Um, apartments uh, tax at a commercial rate, this will be good for the town. And as I already stated, having apartments doesn't necessarily mean a ton of kids. Kids just, people just aren't having the kids like they used to. So there should be less of an impact on a school system like they might've been years ago. 
and density helps pay for services. If you have a giant subdivision, for example, you have long roadways, you have sewer and water um, services that uh, spread all along the roadways. It costs money to maintain these. If you're building upwards, you don't have the long roadways, you don't have sewer pipes running for you know hundreds of yards or, or miles. Um, so this has helped cut back the cost of some of these services. Um, Building vertically also preserves open space. Uh, we heard this a lot that the remaining open space that the town has, want, people want that preserved. So we don't want um, random giant buildings uh, in the rural or rural aspect of less developed areas of town. We want to keep them in the densest portions of town, mainly the high with the Route 20, Route 12 corridor. Uh, additionally, many surrounding towns um, already have higher. Uh, dimensional regulations, Charlton um, recently approved uh, taller buildings in certain sectors, uh, Sutton, Westboro, Shrewsbury, these are all nearby towns. They may not directly border Auburn, but Auburn does compete with them. We want to attract business, we want to maintain what we have. We need to be able to compete with those surrounding towns to maintain the vibrant business. Uh, as I already mentioned, several many businesses want the higher, taller buildings. So um, the first picture you're seeing is uh, Northboro Crossings. Uh, you might be familiar with that. I believe that's where um, Fragments is located. This is the type of density we're talking about, not the other building. We're not talking about a 15-story high-rise plopped in the middle of Drury Square. This is not what we're aiming to do. We're looking for a nice, clean, attractive-looking homes that um, maybe, uh, families, people can enjoy. Well, the fire department was good enough to put together this rendering. This, um, this is um, at the Shaw's Bed Bath Beyond, um, right near um, Drury Square across from the library. Um, this is an example of what a 62 foot building would look like in that area. I want to make note make that we don't have any business looking to go in there at this time. This is just uh, purely for a, a visual purposes. We don't have anybody asking to build this tall in this location. Um, but I mean, the fire department um, is in support of this proposal for safety reasons. Um, if the fire chief would like to speak in a few moments about the safety, um, the benefits of safety with tall buildings, I'll turn it over to him. But this is just an example. Uh, this is a picture of Hudson Mass. Again, this is kind of the idea we're looking for with the density and the taller buildings, the walkable streets, mixed uses. Uh, it's very popular with people. This is some of the feedback we've had from the master plan survey and many of the other outreach initiatives. People are looking for this. Uh, you know, sprawling low density growth creates long commutes, the bedroom towns with no sense of community. As I already mentioned, it consumes open space and natural areas and it destroys the environment with the air and water pollution. Uh, strong, healthy communities are walkable mixed uses. They have a mix of homes you know, for a wide range of residences. There's green space and it helps promote a strong economy. Um, this is some of the fire protection benefits of um, having denser buildings. Uh, I'm not going to read it all, but there's many uh, items in the building code that require better fire protection the tall of the building, specifically over 70 feet. It's just a safer building and it's easier for the fire department to combat fires if um, Hopefully that would never happen, but it's just, it's better to have tall buildings for fire protection. Um, partly because of this reason, this is a picture of Home Depot and BJ's. They are very large buildings. It's not easy for the fire department to um, get their equipment, whether it's a ladder truck or hoses to the middle of the building. Um, smoke doesn't clear very well from a, a big low building like this. Uh, it's, it's better fire protection with the taller buildings. Um, and I'll also add that if you turn these buildings on end, they will be much, much higher than what we're looking to um, 
have the town meeting vote on. Uh, 453 feet uh, wide would be 453 feet tall. We're only looking for 80 to 110 feet uh, with a special permit. So we already have some extremely large buildings that take up a lot of space and aren't easy to protect from fire. Um, so again, how do we get here? Community input. We had lots of outreach. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities for people to comment. And we didn't, the town administration just didn't make up these proposals. It was careful thought from all of these plans, all of this outreach initiative to present uh, town meeting members with what the public would like to see to attract business, to promote the economic viability of the town and to attract the businesses that, um, the people want. So I welcome any questions. Uh, if people want to contact me I'm at Town Hall, uh, Department of Inspectional Services, my email is, is on the town website, the phone number is on the town website. I welcome any questions. All of us here tonight welcome questions. So um, if you have any, please contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. That was that was excellent. Did anyone want to add to it, Chief? Are you I'm all set uh, for right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for doing that. And again, just to reiterate, for town meeting members, have any questions before uh, Tuesday night? We're happy to answer them, whether it be uh, any of these three zoning articles or any of the other articles. I do, uh, if I can, just take uh, two minutes to just talk quickly about Article 19, because I know we have our uh, developers here as well, and I just want to make sure town meeting members understand what Article 19 is, and that is a proposal to provide an, an easement to the developers of 190 Washington Street to access our sewer system. This is something they looked at multiple options, and this is the option that the Board of Sewer Commissioners actually embraced, uh, as well as uh, the DPW director. And we are coming before the town meeting to seek authorization for the Board of Selectmen to provide this easement so that this development can proceed. Again, this development is going to be uh, multiple parcels for commercial and industrial businesses. And the other options that were looked at were not the, the most efficient options. And they also would have probably resulted in greater land and wetlands disturbance, uh, which would have uh, definitely had an impact on on the town because it would have been unnecessary for additional sewer infrastructure. And also just to be clear, this easement and the language in the easement will include a stipulation that the developer and subsequent owner of the property will be responsible for the maintenance and repair of the sewer line and not the town. So that is why we are recommending this article. And then since I did get questions on uh, one other article, I just, I do want to mention we have two uh, IT or uh, Infotech articles on the warrant. And one is a uh, $3,000, just going to get my notes. Um, sorry, it is a $3,000 article to do a, what they call an incident response plan. Basically, an instant response plan for IT means that it's a plan on what we would all do as members of, of the uh, municipal government if indeed there was a cyber security attack or breach. We're making many strategies and measures that we put into place to prevent such an attack, but in the event that something were to happen, we need to have a plan in place. So we are hiring a consultant who does this all the time to analyze and evaluate all of our IT systems, whether it be public safety, the library, uh, town hall, DPW, and to come up with an integrated plan so we'll all know how to react should uh, an event like that ever happen. And the other article I, I was asked a question about uh, was the $42,000 uh, for the purchase of new security cameras, and that's Article 12. We are replacing all of the town side security cameras, not the school side. Uh, the current cam cameras are about a decade old, and many of the features that you should have for cameras such as these were not in existence uh, back 10 years ago. They, they served a purpose, but they are limited in their use. The resolution on these cameras is really poor. So if we're using them for any type of um, post surveillance issues or public safety issues that we need to go back and look at, it's very, very difficult to uh, to get clear definition of some of the viewpoints. So we would be replacing uh, these cameras with these funds. 
And I think uh, the only other question we had received was, uh, Darlene, I'm not sure what article it is, but it was on the funding for the uh, reu reuse of the funding for the module that we received other grant funding for and replacing it to now do something different. So do you want to just mention that quick? And sure. then Thank you. Uh, article 10. Um, so this is to uh, repurpose um, the money that we had um, originally planned on for an online permitting module. This will piggyback um, the online module that we have already in place for uh, the building department um, and we also have an animal uh, control portion for licensing um, we are going um, to try to um, uh, build upon that and add in the uh, the health portion um, for permitting um, and allowing people to be able to do some of those functions online um, we were fortunate to be able to uh, get grant money for this. Um, so we would like to um, repurpose this money for uh, the mapping organization project. Over the past several years, um, our team in DDIS has been looking um, and making real good progress on the attic um, on the third floor and um, getting all of the public records organized. Um, we have a lot of maps, um, hundreds of maps, and um, this uh, money would go towards that mapping organization project to be able to identify, um, you know, uh, the maps, organize, organize them by streets, location. We would actually have um, a, a working area where we would be able to, if somebody comes in to request a certain map, be able to actually find it. Um, so we're hoping that um, uh, the town members uh, see value in it. Um, we have, we're committed um, over the past several years to organizing the upstairs and we're making um, really good headway. Great. Thank you. Anyone else who's an article sponsor, if you had any questions that you received in advance, I think we pretty much covered all those questions that were asked. Uh, mostly actually in other meetings and we haven't, I think we've heard from one or two town meeting members and I believe we just addressed some of the questions that they had as well. So again, just want to remind all the town meeting members we are available until the town meeting next week. Obviously, ask questions on the floor of town meeting. We're prepared and ready to answer them. We just thought we'd give you the opportunity to ask us in advance because we want to make sure that you've got the information you need to make an informed decision when you're asked to vote on these articles next week. So, um, Ed, do you have... Yeah, anything? just um, one thing I'd like to Add. I just want to remind those people who may be watching tonight or, or watch a tape of this meeting that Article 5, the repurposing of uh, school um, bonds, it will be postponed indefinitely. So uh, the, the purpose for which they want to amend this article, uh, Bond Council has opined that um, the purpose would not qualify at this point in time. The amendment would have to be done uh, well in advance of the borrowing. So they're putting this matter on hold and may address it at a later date. Great. Thank you. And I guess one last thing just about logistics. If indeed anyone does uh, want to be separated, we are using the auditorium. We're not having any outdoor parking options this, uh, this time uh, for a number of reasons. Primarily, there's no state of emergency in place as there was at the last point, uh, but we are requiring masks. So you can see we're wearing them here in, in town hall, but we are requiring masks be worn at town meeting as well. So please, when you come in and go into the auditorium, we're going to arrange it so that you can spread out. You don't just need to be in the lower section. You can move back a little bit. We'll make sure that all of the department heads are in one section so they're easily identified and can get to the microphones. But uh, please spread out and just still take every precaution that you can when you come on uh, Tuesday. And we look forward to seeing everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everyone here, for your time. Much appreciated. Go Red Sox. <laughs>